here and to those of you who will be seeing this uh, once it gets online. I need to turn on that microphone. That one, that one. Uh, so welcome. Welcome on this wonderful day. It is a day, in spite of the news, that sometimes impinges upon us. A day which brings some joy and gladness to our hearts. To be gathered together to praise and worship, to enjoy the beautiful weather, and to look forward for some of us to a football game a little later on. So, so welcome if you join us online. Welcome if you join us in person. Welcome if you are young or old or a little bit of each. Welcome if you are gay or straight, queer or questioning, cis or bi. Welcome if your skin tone is black or brown or white or a little bit of each. Welcome if you are doubting or believing or a little bit of each. Welcome and grace and peace to you this day. My name is Teresa Moisey and I am in ministry here at Harrow United Church in the Crescentwood neighborhood of Winnipeg with the good folks of this congregation and neighborhood. Harrow United Church is located on Treaty 1 land. It is the traditional territory of the Cree, the Oji Cree, the Dakota, the Ojibwe, the Anishinaabe, and the Dene peoples. And we are in the heart of the Métis Nation, just a very short distance from the historic site of Roostertown, and not far from both the birthplace and the burial place of Louis Riel. We are also grateful for the water, which flows to us from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation, and we rejoice that Shoal Lake 40 now has its own clean water supply. We acknowledge the history and the spirituality and the cultures and the languages of these peoples and their connection to the land from time immemorial. We acknowledge as well the pain and suffering that endured because of colonialism and racism. And we commit ourselves to living with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with all its peoples. Welcome, grace, and peace to you this day. Uh, Cheryl's got a few announcements ready for us. This is the season for our annual financial appeal at Harrow. This year our focus is on staying connected and donations will be directed towards ways that we can continue to do that and multiply its effect. Many thanks to those who responded to the Giving Tuesday campaign and for others there's opportunity to donate anytime until the end of the year. Thank you for your support. My family, Roy and all of Henriksen, and my two brothers, Greg and Warren, moved to Mulvey Avenue in 1949. Soon afterwards, we began attending Harrow United Church. Now, my growing up years in the church included Explorers, CGIT, Choir, and Sunday School. And as a matter of fact, it was here at Harrow where I first met my lifelong dear friend, Shirley May. She is greatly responsible for my continued connection to the community. And I now live in Maple Ridge, British Columbia, having moved out here in 1976. I am retired from teaching and live happily with my husband, Edward Smith, who also was a Crescentwood resident from Jesse Avenue. It's been lovely having an association with your minister, Reverend Teresa, and attending many of the exciting programs online. But most importantly, I am here to greet you and to support this campaign. I want to say how heartwarming it has been to visit and participate via Zoom. I have enjoyed activities such as the book club, uh, last year's Advent study series, and the reading of an audacious invitation, as well as meeting all the women involved. These online programs have made me feel like a real part of the Harrow community, and I would like to see them continue and grow.
Once again this year, Sherry will be producing a Share the Light video. Details of how to create your little clip and send it to her are available from the church office or in our weekly message. She needs your clip by December 13th, and we'd love to have you, your neighbors, your friends, your relatives, as many as possible to be included for our Christmas Eve worship. Throughout December, there are a variety of ways you can join us for worship. There will be opportunity for those who would like to join us in person to come to the church and provide proof of vaccination, or you can join us on the live stream at 1030 on Sunday mornings, or you can watch the recorded version later on YouTube. We hope to see you soon. Our annual Blue Christmas Longest Night Service for those who struggle to find the joy in the season will be held this year on Wednesday, December 22nd at 7.30 p.m. Please note you may have had previous notice that this was going to be on Monday the 20th. We have now rescheduled it to Wednesday, December 22nd. All are welcome, friends, neighbors, anyone who would like to participate. Virtual coffee time continues every Sunday from 10 until 10.40. If you haven't stopped in, you might want to give it a try. There's always interesting conversation and people glad to see you. The link is available in our weekly news or from the church office. Today and throughout the week, we are invited to keep the following in our prayers. Before we move into formal worship, I invite you to breathe deeply, to clear your mind and body of the tension and distractions they are carrying, and to center yourself in God as we listen to some music. Prepare the way. So cried John the Baptist in the wilderness. So cried the prophet Isaiah. But today I say it to you. Prepare the way. Let every heart prepare a home. Every place prepare a throne. Prepare the way for God is in our midst. Clear out that which keeps you from noticing. Prepare the way. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Emmanuel, God, with us, gift us with expectant hearts this Advent season. Renew in us the hope that lies dormant. Expand in us the hope that believes in restoration and possibility. Shape us into bearers of your light and hope, your peace and joy for all the world. Emmanuel, God with us, renew us, restore us, and reshape us by the work of your Spirit. And in the name of the Christ we pray. Amen. And our hymn is, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
through Advent, the days grow shorter, the nights grow longer, and our world grows darker and colder. Week by week, we light candles into our Advent wreath to brighten the darkness, to bring little warmth, and to remind ourselves that nothing is so dark or cold. It is beyond God's saving power. The first week, we lit the candle of hope. The second Sunday of Advent, we lit the candle of peace. In this third week of Advent, we light the candle of joy, remembering that God's gift of joy, there is always room for more joy in our world. Please join me as we pray. God, we thank you for the gift of joy. Help us to share it with one another. We wait for Jesus with hope, peace, and joy. Amen.
Oh God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love. Amen. The readings are from the New Revised Standard Version. Isaiah 38, sorry, 35, 1 to 10. The return of the redeemed to Zion. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped, and the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of the jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it will be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. And they shall not, they shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and singing, sighing shall flee away. Mark one, one to five the proclamation of John the Baptist. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my message ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to
this third week of Advent is, as we know from the candles that were lit, the theme of joy. Like other emotions, joy comes in many levels. It can be fleeting sometimes, sometimes longer lasting. Often, in order to experience a deep joy, we first experience deprivation or hardship or anguish. The depth of one mirrors the heights of the other. Our worship today focuses on joy and the promise of God's gift of joy. So Cheryl, if you could flip the next slide, please. So the arrival home of the infant who has spent their first weeks of life in a neonatal intensive care unit is particularly tender and joyous. family that have not been able to see or touch one another for years reunite with particularly deep joy and tighter hugs. The farmer who has waited and watched through parching drought and scorching heat laughs as she dances in the rain. The addict whose life is redeemed and given a fresh start feels a joy that is almost beyond imagination for some of us. The bereaved wake one day to find the burden a little lighter, and discover the delight of a child learning to skate, perhaps. In our book study that we've been engaged in over these past several weeks, the study of Rachel Held Evans book, uh, Inspired, we were reading and talking together this past week about resistance stories, she calls them. So they're stories, she always recounts a modern one, as at least one modern one, as well as scriptural stories, because the book is, after all, about the Bible. She tells the story at the outset of that chapter of a young woman, I believe she was 21 at the time, who scaled the flagpole in um, South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, somebody help me here, uh, but took down the Confederate flag that had been flying over the State House there um, for since the 1960s when it had been reestablished as the flag of that legislature. She talks about how when she came back down to the ground uh, with those who had been supporting her in this effort and as she was arrested, she quoted from the Psalms. God is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? It's a story of resistance to the authorities. The authorities are the ones who had decided to place that flag there. She felt a deeper loyalty instead to her God and her faith. So Rachel Held Evans recounts some of the other stories of resistance. Some of those will be familiar to you. You might know the story of the Hebrew midwives who when Pharaoh declared that they should uh, destroy all the baby boys, uh, found a way to keep them alive. You might know the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Or you might know the story of Jesus facing up to the authorities of his day. Or of his cousin John, who did so to prepare the way for him. The apocalyptic stories in the Bible, like the book of Daniel or the book of Revelation, which is another John's story, tell about many-headed beasts and dragons and fearsome, um, fearsome and to be feared uh, powers. But the apocalyptic stories in the Bible, as much as some people would like to believe, set on a timeline, don't do that. They don't tell us when or how that's going to happen. What they do tell us is this. God's goodness will be victorious over evil. They tell us that God has not forgotten. Not forgotten the lowly and the downtrodden. Not forgotten the suffering and the sorrowful. Not forgotten those who are terrorized. 
God has not forgotten the despairing or the lonely ones. And as Rachel L. Evans puts it in her book, we are reminded by resistance stories that dragons can be slain. And so as people of faith, we participate in hope and we witness to joy. There are many ways that we might do that. One of them, again, I'll get Cheryl to put something up on the screen if you is through the Right for Rights campaign from Amnesty International. Right for Rights is a campaign that is coordinated around December 10th every year, which is the International Day for Human Rights. These are two stories uh, that were featured in previous years, Nasima and Germain, and they tell us they are now free. So the effort that you or I or hundreds of other people take do make a difference. As it's reported on the Amnesty International Canada site, they say thanks to your support and efforts, three more prisoners of conscience, Nasima, Alsada, Germain, Bukuki, and Peng Phil Min are free. And in, in February, another prisoner of conscience, Algerian journalist Khaled Drareni, was released. Thank you for all of your efforts that have led to their freedom. Um, here you might be able to read that, but if not, I'm going to read it for you. Amnesty supporters from around the world took more than 436,000 actions calling for Jermaine's freedom. 436,000 letters, emails, Instagram posts, uh, whatever, were sent in support of this man uh, who was imprisoned in Burundi, including nearly 10,000 from Canada. On behalf of herself and their three young children, Jermaine's wife, Emmeline Mupasoni, shared her thanks with you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all to have mobilized and made it possible for Jermaine to reunite with us soon. There's another uh, wonderful story. Peacock Generation are uh, a group of young men who I think were about 18 or 19 when they were arrested in Myanmar. They were arrested because they had uh, um, created a satirical skit and performed it. Um, uh, criticizing the military regime in Myanmar. And again, because of the actions of so many, they were released. And again, we have the words of, uh, of uh, the father of one of these young men who says, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you, thousands upon thousands of you, who have made a difference, that my son, my child, is now safe. So what we do, what we believe, what we hold on to, makes a difference. We have the opportunity as people of faith to participate in hope and to witness to the joy that that hope gives rise to. So let's hold on to those apocalyptic stories from the Bible. Because in that context, um, the word apocalyptic doesn't mean the end of the world, like it does in, you know, the film Apocalypse Now or in other modern language. In the Bible, apocalyptic means things are being revealed. Apocalyptic means disclosing, uncovering, bearing to the vision of all. And so when we hear the story of Daniel in the lion's den with his friends in, uh, thrown there because of their faith, and refusing to bow down to the, uh, to the powers of political forces. When we read John's revelation at the end of the Bible and his vision of vicious beasts, what those stories are really saying is, beneath all the wealth and power, the excess of these dazzling empires lie grotesque monsters, trampling everyone and everything in their power. That's what the monsters are. And when they depict God as tolerating and then restraining and finally destroying these monsters, what they're saying is, the story isn't over. 
Even the greatest empires are no match for goodness, righteousness, and justice. It might not look like it now, but the resistance is winning. As Rachel Held Evans tells us, beneath the wealth and power and excess of these dazzling empires lie grotesque monsters, trampling everything and everyone in their path. But the story isn't over yet. Even the greatest empires are no match for the goodness, righteousness, and justice of God. And so when the prophet Isaiah says, the wilderness and the dry land will rejoice and blossom, and the burning sand become a pool, and the thirsty ground become springs of water, the haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. When John the Baptist says, prepare the way of the Lord and make the pathway smooth and level, when he preaches about a baptism of repentance, these are words of hope. When we hear these words, these proclamations, these stories, they assure us that though it might not look like it right now, the resistance is winning. Even the greatest empires are no match for goodness, righteousness, and justice. And once these things are revealed, then we repent. That is, we turn from despair or turn from our contributions towards injustice and greed and hate and turn toward the promises of God. We can receive and believe that the one who is the maker and mentor of the universe is capable of bestowing upon any one of us, upon all of us, the gifts of hope, of peace, of joy. As Rachel Held Evans puts it in her book, fairy tales are more than true. Not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be defeated. Once things are really revealed, the first steps have been taken to change the present reality into the promised future, to defeat those dragons. Now, I can't tell you uh, what all this means for today's Great Cup game, or for the chances of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers repeating as champions. But I can tell you about some of those photos. I can tell you about Nasima and Jermaine who are now free, and the words from Ms. Uh, Jermaine's wife. I can tell you about Peng Fo Min in Myanmar, whose father says, I just wanted to say as a parent, thanks so much for helping my son. I can tell you that wherever hope is alive, the promise of joy is not far behind. Hope is not empty air. Peace is more than just a lullaby. Joy is full and flowing when we join others to confront the dragons. Hear the exhortation then from Isaiah. Strengthen the weak hands. Make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God, who will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense, who will come and save. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. And so we respond by bringing our best to God. We offer all that we have and all that we are, trusting that God can transform it. Yes, a love for the world. And we join together in prayer. For stories of hope. For stories of joy. For newborns safely arriving in their home. For reunions after great separation. For promises fulfilled, new life delivered. For joy and laughter with friends and family. For all that fills our cup to the brim, 
We give you thanks and praise, God. There are many who live without a sense of hope. There are many this day who are despairing. There are many who are uncertain about the future. And so be near, we pray, God. May your spirit weave amongst us and them. May it bring healing and hope, compassion and comfort, courage and love. We lift up before you those who are on our prayer lists, those for whom we have been particularly invited to pray. We bring before you our prayers for Alma, for Elizabeth, for Tennis, for Christine, for Laura, for Jean, for family and friends of Cheryl Stephen, family and friends and community of Dave Cushing. We lift before you all those affected by tornadoes and storms in the United States and by other weather events of which we are not aware around the whole earth. All that we ask for ourselves, we ask for them as well. Hear our prayers for all who are ill, all who are alone, all who are frightened, all who are in need of security, and all those whose names are written on our hearts and uttered by our lips. These and all our prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus, and together we sing and echo of the prayer which he taught.
My thanks to John at the piano, to Cheryl at the uh, PowerPoint, and, uh, and to Sarah, who's at work. We really missed you today. Um, as you go out from this place, may you go with a spring in your step. May joy be the gift that you carry out into the world. May peace and hope be in you and spill out from you into everyone you meet. May God's love be with you. God's spirit enfold you. Christ keep you this day and always. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.